Hey everyone, James Krizabo here with WBM's Technology Experience and Enablement Team, where we work with our clients to help them better understand technology in this rapidly changing environment. Today we're talking about security and specifically around security at home and how you can better protect yourself and your information. The modern workplace of today means that we can work anywhere, and if we've seen anything over these past few months, this is something that is likely to stick with us for the foreseeable future. Working from home or working remotely are certainly things that come with some advantages, but there are also some things that you need to keep in mind that you might not have thought about when you were working in an office, things that will ultimately keep your data more safe and secure. But to start, we need to talk about security and what exactly cybersecurity is. Today, I've broken it down into three pillars, hardware-based security, software-based security, and user awareness. Now, it's the combination of all of these things that will ultimately make you more secure and make your data less vulnerable. If any of these things is missing, there's a security vulnerability that exists. And so hopefully by the end of this video today, you'll be able to understand where you're already secure and where you maybe could use some work to secure yourself better. So first, let's talk about hardware security. In front of me here, I have the new fifth generation Lenovo X1 Yoga, an amazing and fast machine but a machine that comes with some really cool hardware security features built into it. Things like the Think Shutter that I can open and close to actually physically block my webcam so that nobody can hack my webcam and look at me. Other things like the fingerprint sensor and the Windows Hello IR camera to let me log in using biometric authentication. This lets me create a more complicated password to log into my computer, but it doesn't take away the convenience of having to remember and type in that password every time I wanna access my machine. There are some other things as well. There's an optional privacy guard display that I don't have on this one, which will limit the view angles of the monitor when engaged so that only people sitting directly in front of the screen are able to see what's on the screen. There are other things as well, things like the privacy alert that's baked into a lot of Lenovo machines that will actually use your webcam and scan around you to look for people looking at your screen. If it notices that someone behind you is looking at your screen, what it will do is it will actually alert you in the bottom right hand corner of your computer that someone's actually looking at your screen and automatically enable that privacy guard for you so that they're unable to see what's on your screen. Now that we've looked at securing your hardware, let's look at software security, starting with passwords. Look at these two passwords on the screen and think for a minute, which one do you think is the more secure password? Now you may have guessed wrong or you may have guessed right, but I'm guessing you didn't think there was that much of a difference between those two passwords. This is the thing, we've been trained over the years to think that if we have really complicated passwords with letters and capitals and numbers and symbols, that's what makes a hard password. And the reason we think it makes it hard is because it's hard for us to remember those passwords. But the reality of it is, the easiest way to strengthen your password is simply to make it longer. You can see with the example above, the second combination is just a string of random words. They're all lowercase, but the thing that it does is it makes that password really long. Now I'm not suggesting you should go out there and use a phrase like I love you. That's not a secure password. English grammatical phrases are not secure passwords. But when we're thinking in terms of password security, if you take five words that all maybe mean something to you, but don't mean anything in the context of one another, that password will generally be way stronger than a shorter password that is impossible for you to remember. The biggest way you can get around this is using something like a password manager. What a password manager does for you is it's a software application or wallet that lives on your computer or your mobile phone that stores all of the passwords and all of the account information for all of your logins. The nice thing about a password manager is that you can set one master password that's really complicated and hard to crack, but you can let the password manager do the work of actually giving you a password for each and every login that's different from one another. The other way you can help secure your account is called MFA or 2FA, so multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication. This might be something you've heard before. What this essentially is, is it means that in conjunction with your regular password that you would use to sign in with an account, you need some other form of authentication. These could be Microsoft Authenticator, which is an app that runs on your phone, where you punch in a number that's constantly changing. It could be Google Authenticator, 
or it could be a text message that gets sent to your phone when you log into account. I'm sure you've seen that before. Now those text message two-factor authentication methods are not the most secure. Granted, still much better than not having it at all, but your best bet is to use some sort of MFA authenticator app like Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator. We've gone through a number of ways to protect yourself from a hardware and a software perspective, but none of that matters if you click on a malicious link, go to a dubious website, and put in your account information and hit submit. User awareness is really the pillar or the cornerstone of cybersecurity. If you're able to determine whether something is suspicious or not, you'll be better equipped to protect yourself and your data. If you get a strange email from someone asking for personal information, it's something as simple as picking up the phone and giving them a call to ask them if they actually sent that email. Other things that you probably already know is don't put in your banking information or your password information into weird websites or click on strange links from people you don't know. So wrapping up, today we've talked about hardware security, software security, and user awareness. If one of these is missing, the house falls down. With this move to the modern workplace and working remotely, we have to be more educated and understand more about the tools that we're using to better make decisions and keep our data secure. Whether that's a fancy new laptop with cool hardware security features, or simply just understanding how to better secure yourself online, all of these things will contribute to more improved security for you and your data. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please visit us at wbm.ca. We've got more of these videos coming, so stay tuned for more. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.